Okay, so we're going to look at some multivariable calculus. And we've got this functional here, which is from 0 to x, which we don't know, with regards to x, y squared and y prime squared. And y and y prime are functions of x, and they are individual functions. So they are independent of each other. And y of 0 equals 0 is the only information that we've got for y. And the functional is y prime, y and x. These are what it's made up of. And we're looking to find y of x. So how are we going to go about that? Well, first things we can look for is the Euler-Lagrange equation. So the Euler-Lagrange equation is partial derivative of this functional with regards to y minus the total derivative of the functional with regards to y prime. Now another way you could write this is the partial of f with regards to y minus total derivative of the functional with regards to y prime. So the partial of f with regards to y prime. And these all equal zero. Okay, now partial derivatives, we can take that of this functional here. This is the functional part. So the functional of f with regards to y. Well, y prime squared has got nothing to do with the y. So we can just put that down as the derivative of y squared, which is 2y. So I'm going to use this notation for this time. So fy equals so 2y using the power rule, just as in single variable calculus. OK, so now let's take our partial derivative with respect to y prime, taking into consideration this minus sign. So f of y prime is minus y prime squared. Derivative of that is minus 2y prime. Okay, and the y squared, no function of y prime there, so we just leave it as this. And now we need the total derivative of minus 2y prime. Now, the minus 2y prime, there's only a function of y prime there, so there's no need for the chain rule. So now all we do is just write that down as minus 2y, and then the y prime just becomes the derivative again, which is y double prime. Okay, so that's the building blocks for our Euler-Lagrange equation. So all we do now is plug that into this and make it equal to zero. Partial of f regards to y, that's just 2y. Our total derivative is minus 2y double prime. So I'll just put that in the bracket so we don't miss the minus. So minus 2y double prime, and that equals zero. OK, so we've got two minuses, obviously makes a plus. And the constant multiples here, or coefficients, we can just divide everything by two and simplify it a little bit more. So then we've got y plus y double prime equals zero. Now, I always find it good practice to bring this y double prime to the front, just as you do when you're doing your partial derivatives back in calculus one days. So y double prime plus y equals zero. OK, now with uh, partial differentiation, we need to try and solve this and find building blocks to find a solution. So first of all, we write this equation as like this. So y double prime, we can write this now as r squared. There's no power of y, so we just put the constant multiple in there for 1. So there's a coefficient here of 1 that we can't see, that we don't need. So r squared plus 1 equals 0. So now all we do is try and solve this for r. So r squared equals minus 1. r equals plus or minus square root of minus 1. So r equals plus or minus i. OK, so our building blocks now will be y of x equals so first coefficient, we're just going to put in as 
C1, that's an arbitrary constant, and that will be for cosine of x plus C2 sine of x. Okay, let's take this off the board now. Done with that. Okay, now need to try and find some coefficients here. So all we're given is this here, y of zero equals zero. So basically when x is zero, y is zero. So we can try putting that in there and see if we can come up with anything from here. So y of zero, well that is zero. And then for all the x's, we're just gonna put in a zero. So C1 cosine of zero plus C2 sine of zero. Okay, so we know what cosine of zero is and sine of zero. So let's just write that in here just to keep our steps nice and clear so we know where we're going. So sine of zero is zero. So let's put that in there. So if zero equals C1 plus C2, I'll just put my one there in there as well, C2 times zero. So this zero equals C1 times one plus C2 times zero. So this is going to be zero. So therefore the only way that can happen is if C1 is zero. So C1 must be zero to make this um, equation valid. So we've got C1 equals zero. So now going back to here, bring this back down now, if we know C1 is zero, then this C2 must be some constant. So therefore what we can say is that y of x equals c2 sine of x. And that is as far as we can go at this stage with this question.